Greek consonants are classified into three categories. Sibilants, letters that have an S sound. Liquids, when we say these letters, the air slides through our mouth like liquid. The rest are called stops, because the flow of air stops at some point when we say them. Stops are further subdivided into labials, palatals, and dentals. With labials, we use our lips to stop the air, palatals, we use our palate, and dentals, we touch our teeth. The letter we need to really understand is the sigma. I call it the sinister sigma. And there are two copycats. They're not quite as sinister as the sigma, but they try to be, theta and kappa. First, let's talk about words that end with a liquid letter. As you know, like English, Greek can add things to the beginning or ending of word stems. If a word ends with a liquid letter, and a sigma is added to the end, the sigma disappears. Think of it this way, the sigma slips on the liquid. Now let's talk about the stops. The stops are frequently put into a table like this, called the table of stops or square of stops. Now, if a word ends with a labial stop and a sigma is added, the two letters together will become a psi. You may think this is odd, but think about it. A sigma, after a p, makes a ps sound. Well, psi already makes a ps sound. We kind of do this in English already too, particularly with shorthand. The baseball team is called the Boston Red Sox, but it is spelled with an X because CKS and X make the same sound. So any labial followed by a sigma equals PC. Here's an example. The word stem ends in a labial, and when an ending with a sigma is added, the labial plus sigma equals a PC. When a word ends in any palatal and a sigma is added, it becomes a xi. Here's an example. The word stem ends in a palatal, and when an ending with a sigma is added, the palatal plus sigma equals a xi. When we get to dentals, the sigma is at its most sinister. If a word ends in a dental and a sigma is added, the dental disappears entirely. The dental gets its teeth knocked right out. Here's an example. The word stem ends in a dental, and when an ending with a sigma is added, the dental plus sigma equals just a sigma. Now remember that I said there are two copycats that try to be as nasty as the sigma. A kappa causes changes to stops by sliding from smooth to rough. Here's what I mean. If a word ends in a p or a beta, and then a kappa is added, the labial becomes the rough labial stop phi, and the kappa goes away. The same thing happens with palatals. If a word ends in a kappa or a gamma, and a kappa is added, the palatal becomes the rough ki, and the kappa goes away. For dentals, it acts just like a sigma in that the dental disappears and the kappa sticks around. A theta is like a kappa in that when it follows a labial, it will change it to the rough labial, but the theta will stay this time. Same goes for following a palatal. It will make the palatal into the rough form. Finally, when a theta follows a dental, the sigma rears its ugly head again. The dental will go away but the sigma will take the dental spot alongside the theta. Learning about vowel contractions and consonant interactions has highlighted how Greek is different from English. Get to know these rules well, because you will see it a lot, especially as you start to learn verbs. You can find me on the web at ntgreekresources.com, which includes my blog and Twitter feed, and of course numerous resources to help you learn Greek, including apps, songs, videos, software training, and more.